currently. Let's take it to Pretoria, where Minister Kungubele is currently addressing the workers that protested there um, outside the union buildings. As, as from the last quarter, we had a positive 60,000. Now, uh, the, the yesterday or two days ago, we have a positive 648,000. It means the direction is right. The direction says the economy is taking off. If you remember, we said in the first quarter, the, 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 the value of our economy during that quarter, compared to the last quarter of 2018, for the first time, it reached the pre to call the pre-pandemic what call level. So there are many interventions we're making, mainly is turning around the economy in an infrastructure-led manner, which I was trying to explain there. The big challenge that in South Africa we have, is not the absence of money, is actually making the government work. Heidi? Uh, it's Heidi Jokas from ENCA. Minister, I just want to ask in terms of the public uh, servants' wage bill. They are not backing down. They want a salary increase. And um, as we're walking in, workers said that we must ask about that because nothing was really touched on that. As we already know, government's purse is really tight and they cannot afford to extend that public servants' wage bill. What is the plan? I mean, do you expect me to speak about those things there when the negotiations are ongoing? I would be undermining them. There are negotiations which are led by the Minister of Labour. And the most important thing that is that up to this point in far, far, we are told that in that engagement, there's a commitment to come with the useful results. And we don't know what that result is going to be, but that's how far I can go. They are on and we commend the workers for staying on the table. Kopano. Minister Kopano Gumbi from Newsroom Africa. Uh, on social cohesion, to have uh, parties like or federations like Kosatu marching against you, what happened in NetLack that you guys couldn't uh, agree on these issues at the negotiating table? Remember, the relationship between ANC and Kosatu is on the primary, the goals of national democratic revolution. And that unity we expect it to stay forever. Non sexism, democracy, unity, peace and so on. That's the core and the main glue of our relationship. And uh, what also combines us is that we are a progressive perspective. So, but it doesn't change the fact that they must at all times represent workers honestly. And because if they were to try and not represent workers honestly, that relationship would not last. Minister, Minister, there was a lot of calls outside here for President Saul Ramaphosa to be removed as president of the country and that the ANC government is failing its people. Are you afraid come the 2024 elections and how ready is the ANC for that elections? Listen, whether we stay in 2024 or not, we will not deal with that if our basis is a fear of loss of power. The only way that we can stay in 2024 is when we restore the historic intention of the ANC of working hard until we turn the economy around. And you will not run that by fear of losing power. That's not our first priority. Our first priority is being worried about the situation where the poor uh, the workers, the rural are. Uh, it's not the, the fear for them voting against us will not help us deliver. The most important thing in 2024, we want to look back and say, we were here, we tried, and you will not achieve that through fear. I will hear for Kazan companies. Um, if I heard you correctly, you just said now a lot of the demands that were made here depend on the economy to turn around. Uh, for them to be met. Now, against that statement, my question is then the call for the decrease of fuel, would you say it falls part of that? A anything that can make us assist our people to afford life is going to be done. As I've already said to you, we have demonstrated that until July, re temporarily reducing what you call uh, pricing, and already I've just told you. Just this month, petrol has gone down. The projection is that it is going to go down. We are looking at the structure of the petrol pricing. Remember, in that structure, 
There's one which is dollar dominated, which is beyond our control. But that's where government, mineral energy, are actually looking at those other factors which depend on us. And as we do that, because government must continue to deliver infrastructure, we must find another way of actually uh, receiving revenue. So those are some of the interventions we're making. Thank you. On the Your question now. All right, Minister Mtato we'll from Boston Media House. Why should the public have hope in the government that they will implement uh, action based on the memorandum submitted? Why should we still have faith in the government when it's constantly mm. failing us? The, our ability to deliver to that memorandum is not going to be based on any promise we've made. It's going to be based on the programs we make and the outcomes that come out of those programs. I said at the beginning, the first quarter of this year demonstrated that the economy is turning around. Two days ago, the report demonstrated that the economy is resiliently turning around because you should not undermine more than half a million jobs being created. Although the rate of absorption for young people and women is worrisome, and I said to you, or I think I said it somewhere, that if you look at the labor force in South Africa, even if you can, when you say labor force, you talk about people who are at work and those who are actively looking for jobs. Mm. There, you remember just recently we had about 14,9 people in the employ. As from yesterday, we got 15,6 people in the employ. So all that it says to you, we're beginning to increase the what to call the, the level of employment. So all I'm saying is that what, why should people trust? Us? It's neither here nor there. It will depends how honest are we in driving those programs. Because it is those programs that will improve their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Let's take the last one. Uh, uh, let me start with uh, how I have them. And then we'll come to you. Linda. SABC. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. Should I take it? Oh. Should I take the question? Yeah, you oh, can. Minister, offense from SABC. You know, some of the labor unions, they are saying you previously mm. reneged on negotiations after agreeing on a multi-year agreement salary increment. Mm. Why should they trust this process now that it will uh, reap rewards for them? Mm. You know, uh, you know, that is an unfortunate uh, uh, discord because that thing placed, a, we, we came to a point where it became clear that meeting that is unaffordable. And you've got a choice to pretend that you can afford and confront the consequences of running the economy down. As I'm talking to you now, up to three, nearly 300 billion is an uh, interest cost for the law. Remember, when you commit to expenditure, which you cannot fully fund, the gap must, we must access it to loads. F to continue to do that, it means you must increase the cost, uh, the cost of that loan. And the more money goes to the cost of loan, the more it goes away from school, from education, from health. The reality of the time dictated those circumstances. It had nothing to do with an intention to renege. But all those issues are being discussed with the workers. But we know it is what was unfortunate but the objective situation Right, so that's the minister in the presidency, Monty Gugubele, just addressing uh, the media outside uh, Pretoria there uh, following today's nationwide uh, shutdown by SAFTU and Kusato. Of course, among others, the Labour Federations are demanding basic income grant for the unemployed, creation of jobs, and of course, the end to the rolling blackouts. We take a quick break. We'll be back straight after this. Don't go away.